Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, we're going to look at how you can use the new Microsoft OneDrive for work or school. With OneDrive, you can store your files online and in the cloud, and you can get back to them quickly, whether it's a Word document, a PowerPoint presentation, a PDF, or really any type of file. You can access your documents from anywhere on any device, even if you happen to be in a completely remote location. You can also share and collaborate on your files in real time with others. Let's get started with how you can even get OneDrive. To get Microsoft OneDrive, head to the following website. You can also click on the link down below in the description of this video. On this website, click on the sign in button and then sign in with your credentials. If you're already signed into Microsoft 365, up in the top left hand corner, you can click on what's called the waffle. See, it kind of looks like a waffle. It's also referred to as the app launcher. When you click on that, you'll see all of your different Microsoft 365 apps. And right up here, you'll see the option for OneDrive. You can click on that. This now drops us into the home view of OneDrive. Over on the left-hand side, we can see all of our different navigation. If I click on this icon up on top, I can collapse it, or here, I can also expand it. Up at the very top, there's an Add New button. And when I click on this, I have a few different options. I can add a new folder to OneDrive. I could also upload a file or even multiple files. Here, I could also upload an entire folder full of files. And down below, I can create a new document. So a few different options, and we'll get into some of these a little later. Down below, I have different views for all of my files. Right up on top, I can see that I'm currently in the home view, and we'll get into what some of these other views do a little bit later. Within the home view, over on the right-hand side, I see this section titled For You, and this uses AI to recommend relevant files to me. So right here, I can see that Patty Fernandez, my manager, shared this file with me. That's probably pretty important, so I should look at that. Right over here, I could also see that Patty commented on one of my files. So again, this bubbles up the most important information that I should be looking at. Down below, I can also see all of my recent files. So whatever files I opened or edited recently. So here I see all of my different files. I can see when I last opened it, who the owner is, and also activity on that file. So if someone, say, left a comment or maybe they shared the file. And up on top, I could also navigate through and filter down what types of documents I want to see in this recent view. Now, I have some work to get done, so in the top left-hand corner, let's click on the Add New button. This opens up the Add New menu again, and I would like to upload a file from my computer up into the cloud, basically Microsoft servers. I'll select Files Upload. This opens up the file picker, and right here, I have a file titled Kevin Cookie Company Management Offsite. We have an offsite coming up, and I need to make sure we all start working on these files. I'll select this one Excel workbook, and down below, let's click on Open. Right down at the bottom, I can see that the file has uploaded. However, when I look at this recent list, I don't see my Cookie Company Management Offsite file. To see all of your files in OneDrive, over on the left-hand side navigation, let's switch into the My Files view. Within My Files, I can see all of the different files that I have in my OneDrive. And if I scroll down just a little bit, here I can see that file that I just uploaded. Here's the Kevin Cookie Company Management Offsite. And right over here by the name, I see this eyelash icon. This indicates that this is a new file. Along with going up to Add New and Uploading a New File, I can also simply drag and drop a file into OneDrive. Here, I'll move my browser window over just a little bit, and here I have the Kevin Cookie Company logo, and I would like to upload this into my OneDrive. I can press and hold on the file, and here I could drag it over to my browser window. I could drop it into a specific folder, or I could also drop it into the root directory. Here, I'll release the file right here, and that'll upload it into the root. And right here, I see my new file. Right up on top, I can also adjust the way these files are sorted. I could click on this drop down, and I could sort by type, by name, by modified. And I could also adjust whether it's ascending or descending. Now, this is a logo file, and it's a little hard to find it in just a list format like this. I'll click on this icon, and currently it's set to a list. But I could also change it to tiles. I'll select that. And here, instead of seeing a list, I now see tiles of all of my files. And right there, that's the Kevin Cookie Company logo. That's a lot easier to find, especially when it's a visual file. Right up on top, I could switch back to a list view. 
Now that I've uploaded all of my files, I'd like to just organize things a little bit better. In the top left hand corner, let's click on that add new button. And right at the top, there's the option to add a new folder. I'll click on this and this opens up a prompt. Here, I'll type in a name. This is for the management team offsite. And this is now brand new. You can also select a color for the folder. I think this green is a really soothing color. I'll select this and then click on create. And check that out, there's my management team offsite folder. And look at that, that green color really stands out compared to all of these other folders. And that way I won't miss it. I'd like to place the two files that I just uploaded into this folder. Here, I'll scroll down a little bit and there's that logo and here's the Excel workbook. Now I could take a file and I could drag and drop it into another folder, but even easier, I'll make sure this file is selected and I can also click on this one so both files are now selected. I can click on the ellipsis or the three dots or I could also right click on it and here's the option to move to. I'll click on that and here I see all of my different folders. I'll select the management team offsite and let's move these files there. And just like that, it's now moved both files to the management team offsite. Here, I'll click into the folder and there I see my files. As part of the management team offsite, I would like to share out the bios for all of our executives with the broader team but I want all of the executives to provide those files. And this is a really cool feature in OneDrive. Right up here, I'll click on the breadcrumbs and go back to the main My Files directory. And back in here, here again, I see that management team offsite. Now I can right click on this and right here, there's the option to request files. I'll click on this and here I could enter in a description. Well, I want people to please upload your bio and let's click on next. On this screen, I can now request who should upload their bio. Well, we need Patty to do that. I also want Diego to upload his bio. And let's also have Grady provide his. And right down below, I'll click on send. All of these executives will now get a request asking them to upload their bios directly into this folder. That'll make it really easy for them. Look at that. The best way to get work done is to ask others to do it. Let's now click back into the management team offsite and I need to create an invitation for this offsite that we could send out to the team. In the top left hand corner, let's click on the add new button again. And instead of uploading a file, I just want to create a file directly in the cloud. Down here, I have all these different types that I can create. I think a Word document would work well for this. I'll select Word. This now drops me into a new Word document. Up on top, I see that the current file name is just document. I'll click on that and here I could give it a more descriptive name. Let's call this invitation to management team offsite. Down below, I can see where it's currently saved. It's in that new folder that I created in OneDrive for the management team offsite. One of the neat things is as I make changes to this Word document, all of those changes will automatically be saved directly into OneDrive. That's pretty convenient. Let's now jump back into OneDrive. Back in OneDrive, here I can see that new Word document, the invitation to the management team offsite. Now, I would like to invite others to help me write this file. I mean, they can't expect me to just do everything on my own. When I hover over this file, I can click on the ellipsis or I could right click on that and it exposes a context menu with all of these different actions that I could take on the file. For example, here I could share it, I could copy a link, you could delete, you could favorite. When I click away and hover over this file, you'll also see that I have these actions exposed on the top level. Right here, I could share this file directly by clicking on this button. And here, I could also favorite the file. Let me favorite this file because I think I'll be working on this quite a bit coming up. But again, I want to share it with others so others can help me write this out. I'll click on the share icon. This opens up the newly revamped share dialog. Right up here, I can type in names of people who I would like to share this document with. Let's type in Patty Fernandez. She's my manager. She'll want to give some input on this. And let's also add Nestor as well. He always has some good thoughts. Down below, I could even add in a message. Now, management team offsite is coming up. And I really want to know what Patty thinks about AI and how it'll impact the cookie industry. I think it'll change everything. Right over here, I can click on this pencil icon and I can change the permissions. Currently it's set so they can edit this document. So they could go in and they can make changes. I could also set it so they can view only, but what good would that do? I want them to help me write this. And here they could also submit suggested changes, but I'll leave it set to can edit. If you want up on top, you can also click into the settings gear and this exposes even more settings. Here you have some more control over who can access this file. 
Down below, you could also set how long someone has access to this file for. You could even set a password and you can even block the download. But I don't need to set any of that, so I'll click on back and then let's click on send. Look at that, I'm just getting work done today. Right over here on the Word document, I can now see that I've shared this file. If I click on this text, this opens up a place where I can manage the access to this file. Right up on top, I can share with additional people. I can also turn off sharing altogether. And down at the bottom, I can see who currently has access to this document and what their permissions are. Right up here, I'll click on the X icon. Another way to get to that view, you can also right click on the file. And here there's the option for manage access. That opens up the exact same view. Within this view here, I can also scroll over to the right hand side and I can see activity related to this file. And here it tells me that I shared the file with Patty Fernandez and one other. That's great. To see all of the different files that I've shared with others. Over on the left hand side, let's click into the shared view. Within the shared view, I can see all of the different files that have been shared with me. Right here, I can see that Nestor shared delivery options with me. And here I see that Patty shared a few different Excel workbooks with me. Right up on top, I can also filter by name. So let's say I just want to see all the different files that Nestor shared with me, I'll type in his name. And here I see that he's shared two different files with me. I'll X out of this. I could also filter based on the document type. So let's just see all the Word documents or maybe just all the Excel spreadsheets. I'll go back to all. Up on top, I also have another view called by you. These are all of the files that I have shared with others. And right here in this list, I see that invitation to the management team offsite. I shared that with others, so it shows up in this list. I'm going to be using this file quite a bit in the coming days, and I want to make sure that it's easy to access. I've already favorited this file, but over here, I could also click on this ellipsis and right here, there's the option to add a shortcut. When I click on that, I could place a shortcut in my files or I could also select another location. I'll place it in my files. To get back to this file again, over on the left-hand side, I can click in favorites. Here within the favorites view, here I see that invitation to the management team offsite. The nice thing about favoriting a file, this file will also show up as a favorite in Microsoft Word, so I can also get back to it there. Over on the left hand side, let's click into my files. And right here, let's look for that link that I created to this file. Yep, here's the invitation to the management team offsite. I see this icon that lets me know that this is a link to the original file, but this way I can get back to it within my files. I can get back to it within the management team offsite folder or also by going to my favorites. I definitely won't miss that file. Let's now go back to the management team offsite folder. And here I see that I have three different files. But on second thought, I don't know if I need this logo file. I'll right click on it and here's the option to delete it. I'll click on that and it asks me to confirm that I want to delete it and it'll send it to the recycle bin. I'll click on delete because I don't need it anymore. Over on the left hand side, let's click into the recycle bin. And when I click into that here, I'll organize it by date deleted and let's go from newer to older. And right here at the top, I see the KCC logo. If it turns out I would actually like to restore it, I can right click on the file and here's the option to restore. If I click on that here, I could go back to my files, go back to the management team offsite and there's my logo file again. When a file goes into the recycle bin, it'll stay there for over 90 days before it's permanently deleted. So you have plenty of time to get it back if you change your mind. I do also have other work that I need to get done. Nestor asked me to review a file for him. Down below, I can also browse files by people. Here, I'll click on people. And here I can see all the different files that others have shared with me. Here I see all the different files that Nestor has shared with me. And here's Patty. Now Patty's my manager, so I want to make sure that I stay on top of any documents that she shares with me. When I hover over her name, here I see this pin icon. I can click on that and that now pins Patty to the top of this view. And here I can see all the different documents that she shared with me. Right down here, I see Nestor and he wanted me to review the delivery options. And here I see that document right over here. I could click on Nestor and here I see an expanded view of all the documents. There's delivery options, I'll click on this one. This now drops me into the document. And one of the neat things, since this document is stored in OneDrive, I can work together with others in real time. Up on top, I can see that Nestor is currently in the document with me. And I can see that he's right here in the document. 
Now, here are all the different delivery options that Nestor is proposing for the Kevin Cookie Company. It looks like we have pigeon delivery. Here's drone delivery. That's a cool one. I would definitely try that. And if I go down a little more, we also have pneumatic tubes. My only concern is with the pigeon delivery. Will the pigeons eat the cookies before they deliver them? Right up on top, I can click on comments. Here, I'll click there and I can leave a new comment in this document. I'll click on new and let me type in, will pigeons eat the cookies? I think that's a fair question and I'll place this here. Now Nestor or whoever else comes into this document will be able to see this comment. One of the nice things is as I make modifications and edits to this document, because it's in OneDrive, all of those changes will be automatically saved. And one of the really neat things, I could also jump back to previous versions. Up on top, I'll click on the name delivery options and right at the bottom, there is an option called version history. When I click on that over on the right hand side, I can see all the different versions of this document. And if I'd like to jump back to a previous version, I could simply click on the date and time and right up on top, I can click on restore. Let's now go back to OneDrive. Back within OneDrive, I have some meetings coming up and I want to make sure that I'm prepared. Over on the left hand side, there's now a new view called meetings. Now click into this and this shows me all of the upcoming meetings and any of the associated files for those meetings. Here, I'll see things like files attached. I could also see the chat. I could see any recordings from the meeting. Here's a past meeting and I get the stream recording that I could go back to and watch. Right up here, I see that there's a meeting coming up to review cookie industry competitors. Here, I'll click into the Excel spreadsheet and that opens up the Excel file directly in my browser. And here I can review all the data. Just like in Word, I could collaborate with others in real time. I could jump back to previous versions. All of that's possible within here. Let's now go back to OneDrive. Back within OneDrive, I now want to check if anyone has started contributing to that invitation Word doc for the management team offsite. Up on top, I have this search field and I'll type in invitation to management and oh, there's the file right there. I could also click on this search icon and this will show me all related files. One of the neat things in search over on the right hand side, you can click on this filter icon so you can refine the search results that you see. Here you could adjust the modified last by date. Down here, you could also filter by a specific document type. Over here, I'll close out of the filter and this is exactly the document that I'd like. So I'll click on it. And look at that. Nestor has already contributed some text to this invitation. He is a really solid cookie. Let's now go back to OneDrive. Up to now, we've been doing all of our work in OneDrive directly on the web, but you can also use OneDrive on a Windows or Mac PC and also on your phone. In the top right hand corner, let's click on the settings gear and there's the option to get the OneDrive apps. When I click on that, you'll see the option to download OneDrive and install it on either your PC or directly on your phone. Once you finish installing OneDrive on your PC, in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a new icon on your taskbar for OneDrive. I'll click on this and at the top, I can see all the recent activity in my OneDrive account. In the bottom left hand corner, I can open up File Explorer and here I can see my entire OneDrive files. Here I see all of my different folders and I see all of my different files. And look at that, here's my management team offsite folder that we created together. I'll click into that and here I see those three files. Right over here, I see this cloud icon under status. This means that the file is currently stored in the cloud. Now I could click on the file and edit it on my PC, but then it'll be synced again with OneDrive and I won't keep a copy on my PC. I can right click on the file and here I have the option to always keep this file on this device. If I click on that, here you'll see that it's syncing and now I have this green check mark and that lets me know that I have a copy of this file on my PC. Still, if I make any changes to this file, it'll keep it in sync with what's on OneDrive. I can also right click on the file and here I have the option to free up space. When I click on that, that'll remove the file from my local computer and it'll only keep a copy of this file in the cloud. So you have those different options. Within File Explorer, I can also drag and drop files into this view and that'll sync with what's in the cloud. So this is just another way to work with all of your different OneDrive files. Here I am now in Microsoft Word in the desktop app and you can just as easily work with your file in OneDrive. Up on top, click on the file menu and then go down to save a copy. And here you can save directly to OneDrive. When you save in OneDrive, it'll automatically save your file. 
you also get access to version history. So you get all of those same benefits directly within the desktop app. If you don't see OneDrive as an option, click into the file menu and at the very bottom, click on account. Over here, you should see all of your different connected services. If you don't see your OneDrive account here, you can click on add a service, go up to storage, and here you have the option to add OneDrive directly within Microsoft Word. All right, well, that was a quick look at how you can use Microsoft OneDrive. Hopefully you now see some of the advantages to saving files in the cloud. At least for me personally, I wouldn't do it any other way. To watch more videos like this one, please consider subscribing and I hope to see you in the next one.